for joining the, uh, the call today. Um, I realized when I started putting together some slides around this that um, we could talk for a 12 week program on investor readiness. Um, but what I'd like to do today is give you some sort of headlines and talk about some of the key things we have to be aware of. And um, yeah, and I also appreciate that I, there's probably people on this call who um, are sort of very well down the investment journey and other people might just be getting started as well. So hopefully it will be um, useful for people who are just getting started and a refresher for other people and hopefully give you something to think about. Um, and really what I'm going to talk about is startup funding fundamentals, brief chat about cap tables, talk about your funding plan, how best to get organized and, and how best to promote your raise. Um, so just to kick things off, I think it's very important to think about um, what sort of business it is that, you've, that you're running. Um, there's a big difference between startups and small businesses. Um, I work with a, an American guy and an accelerator I'm involved in here in Belfast called Riz Ventures. Um, and our sort of one of our co-founders, an American guy who's very heavily involved in Silicon Valley, gets very upset when people talk about um, startups when they're really small businesses. And he always tells us that a startup is a temporary company established by an entrepreneur to seek, develop, and validate a scalable business model before exiting. And really what that means is that um, when you create a startup, you're already planning to uh, sell or exit that, that business or that company. You're not looking to build and grow something that you're going to pass on to your, your, your family. You're not looking for something which is going to grow or organically um, and build market share um, in different regions as you grow. Startup is very, is very different. Um, and that's why um, startups look to take on investment. Um, rather than just rely on revenue and, and to, to grow. Um, and I think once you take on investment from someone, you have to be working to, to deliver them a return. Um, people don't invest just to park money or to hide money. They, they invest to get a big return off the back of it. So from, the, from day one, the minute you, you accept the check, you have to be thinking, right, how can I make this person um, an awful lot of money? Um, so right at the beginning of this sort of process and of this journey, I think you have to really start thinking about your, your cap table. Um, cap table is a really short way of summarizing, um, who owns your, your startup. Um, it is a thing that a lot of startup founders become, um, slightly obsessed about. Um, as they should do, um, because the people who are listed on there are the people that you're, you're, you're responsible to. Um, the people who are on your cap table, the people who have backed you to deliver something for them, and you have to, to take that initial investment and see how it grows. Um, and I think the most important thing about cap tables is that they change, they evolve um, as, your, as your company grows and you take on investment and as your valuation increases. Um, and when you're starting to think about taking on investment and planning for the future, you shouldn't just be looking at that first investment, right? At your initial valuation of what it's been put at. What you have to think about is in that longer term strategy, that three to five years as you grow the business, um, what's, our, what's your cap table going to look like? Um, are you going to be left at the end of three funding rounds um, with enough of the company still in your own ownership to make the, the process worthwhile? Um, and that takes forward planning. Um, sadly, too often we see people um, giving away far too much of their business um, right at the beginning. Um, if you do that, you're then going to run out of um, shares as you get further down the investment journey. Um, so what we always say is when you're planning out um, investment and investment rounds, you have to plan out 
um, in the slightly medium to, to longer term. Um, with Seed Legals, we have a great tool on the platform that can help you do this. And we have a great team of funding advisors standing by to help you. So if, if you are thinking at this point about um, what does a cap table mean? What's it going to look like if I take on investment? What does it look like if I value my company at this and then give away that many shares? Um, speak to one of our funding advisors and they can talk you through the process and they can chart it out for you on our brilliant uh, cap table tool. Um, and yeah, I promise this is lunch and learning, not seed legals pitching all afternoon. So don't worry, I'm not going to go on about seed legals, but in terms of an opportunity for our service to, to really help you, the cap table tool is there to do it. Um, and when you go onto the platform, the website, and you click on the chat button, there's real funding experts sitting there. It's not um, bots answering your question. Um, one other thing really to talk about around cap tables is also the importance of including a share option pool when you do this planning. Um, it's never, one of the big challenges I'm sure you're all finding as startup founders is how to build teams, how to attract good talent, how to retain that talent. Um, also, if you've got advisors and you've got, maybe you're too early for board members, but people who can really support and grow your business, you want to reward them, but you want to make sure that any cash you have available is used for building product um, or promoting or selling product. Um, share options are a brilliant way of doing that. Um, if you speak to your accountant, there are a couple of um, good uh, tax efficient schemes um, that the revenue have, have introduced. Um, it's something that I know Scale Ireland are working hard um, and lobbying hard to try and get some better um, tax efficient vehicles for um, the awarding of share options, but what I would what I would suggest is you make sure you definitely do have that pool there available, um, to make sure that you can offer offer shares, and you don't have to give away shares straight away. You can vest them so you can incentivize people, um, that if they stay with the company for a certain period of time and if they achieve certain milestones or goals, um, they can be rewarded. Um, so that's something else you can speak to one of our funding guys about. And they can talk you through different options for um, put together a, an option pool for your, your team. Um, so yeah, so getting investment ready. You know, I understand you've got, a, you've got X number of shares and you're prepared to give away some of your company to fuel your growth. What will that funding plan look like? And I always suggest to startup founders that if you can bootstrap for as long as you can, um, you can really build value um, in your startup and show the value to potential investors of what it is that you, what you're what you're doing. Um, it's very difficult to go out and raise investment with a slide deck, talking about a great idea that you have. Um, the great idea can only get you so far. You have to start showing that. You Two things, you have to show that yes, there is a market for it, that people are interested in it, not necessarily, I don't mean it necessarily having to sell something, but showing that there is interest and people want to, to use your product or service. Um, it also shows that you can execute. Um, getting investment often is about convincing people that you can execute on the beautifully crafted and well put together plan that you have. Um, also when you're putting together a plan, you have to think about the medium to long-term view, as I've just said, and how much money that you need to execute what it is that you want to do. And then you have to then think about how much of your company is going to sell, which links back to the cap table chat I just mentioned. Um, that's one of the most difficult things, and that links often in around um, valuation as well. Um, there are ways of raising investment, which we'll come on to shortly, um, where you use a safe or an advanced assurance agreement, where you don't actually have to value your company straight away when you take on investment. Um, but you have to have that long, that medium to long-term view to know that um, once, you, once you do prove some points, you then put a value in the company and then issue shares accordingly. You have to know what you're what you're aiming for and what you're running towards. 
And I think that's where Lost comes down to. We've been using the money for work we want to generate. Um, investors like to know that when you invest, when they invest in the company, um, that there's a clear vision of what that money is going to be used for. Um, unfortunately, as a founder, it's very unlikely there's going to be a nice big fat salary and a good company car. It's it's going to be money poured into the, actually delivering the vision that you've you've that you've um, that you'll have stated. Um, also, when you're putting together a plan, think about your team. Think about um, when you take on the money. Do you want like Anthony Rose, C Legal's founder, he's a big advocate of investors giving him money, to build businesses, and then leaving him alone to get on with it. Other people who are maybe a little bit earlier in their journey want to take on investment, but they also want investors who will help them, who will help them make introductions, who will help them with expertise in specific areas of the business, will open doors for them. Um, you have to decide yourself what, what you want from the money and what you want from the people who are going to invest. Um, also in this very early planning stage, you have to think about where you want the money to come from. Um, are you going to stay very local with your local networks um, because you're building a product or service which is specific to where you are geographically or the sector that you've already been working in? Um, or do you have a vision for your company to launch across uh, Europe into the UK um, or the States? That's the case. Does it make sense that you, uh, you try and find the money there? And if you are looking to, to find the money in those different regions, you then have to think about um, what those investors specifically want. We'll come on to that in a second as well. Um, and then the other thing as well, um, while you're thinking about funding and investment readiness, is have you explored all the grants and soft money opportunities? Um, one of the brilliant things about the Irish startup ecosystem um, is the support that's available locally, um, whether it's from Leo's or Vic or colleges or tech clusters, or I think you probably all know this as well as I do. And within there, there are often grants for specific projects. Um, there's often competitions where you can pitch and win some money and things as well. Explore all of those as well. But one caveat with that is grant funding can be brilliant. You don't have to give away any of your, your company to do it and you can use it to build it, but it can also drag you in a direction that you hadn't originally planned to go in and distract from your initial vision of what it is that you want to do. So make sure that when you take grant money or soft money, that the strings attached don't make it, um, yeah, make it not worth with worth your time or your while. So once you've had a nice think about all these issues, and they're all big issues to think about, but once you've all considered those, um, you then have to think right. What form does the investment take? Um, and I think one option is to. to go into a safe or an advanced assurance agreement. Um, and at Seed Legals, we call them Seed Fast. Um, and I know this is what NDRC now are um, using for their recent accelerant take, and they've actually open sourced their safe agreements, um, which actually matches the um, Seed Legals Seed Fast um, pretty well. So what this allows you to do is to um, go out to investors and basically say, look, if you want to invest in my company, we're not going to put a valuation on it at this point um, because we want to go out and prove an awful lot of proof points on what it is that we're trying to do and trying to achieve. Um, so we're not going to undervalue the company, but more importantly, from the investor's perspective, we're not going to overvalue the company at this point. So if you give us some investment, we will go out and um, execute using the money that you've given us. And then we will have uh, an actual investment round where we'll bring in other money. And at that point, we will um, put on a valuation and issue your shares. This is very good insofar as it does take away that um, difficulty of valuation too early. Um, so it's very much well worth considering. 
Um, and if you are interested in that, um, yeah, similarly, come on to CDGO's website and my funding colleagues can talk you through how exactly you set one of those up and how they, and how they work. Um, it's actually worth noting as well, if you do have um, contacts, plans, aspirations to invest um, in the United States um, or the UK, um, SAFE or, or Seedfast are a really good way um, of, of going into those markets. They're well respected, very well recognized. Um, and in the UK, if investors are trying to be, want the avail of EIS or SEIS um, tax relief, and um, these are compatible with that if you as a business call. So, um, and yeah, apologies if I'm talking very quickly and rambling. Um, just quite a lot to get through at this stage. So, um, thank you. Um, so yeah, getting organised. Getting investment ready is, um, there's an awful lot of work that you have to do. And what we've got on this slide here is what we could probably all, if, if we had a little bit more time and I've been able to get everyone involved and we've done a little bit of brainstorming and throwing out ideas, these are the things that I suspect would be um, thrown out there. They are getting organized for an investment round, what you're really doing is trying to second guess what the investor is going to ask you for. Um, and when they ask you questions, you want to show the investor that you're organized. You want to show the investor that you have a good understanding of your overall business. You want to show the investor um, that you're professional um, and you don't want to have any sort of gaps or weaknesses on largely a lot of this stuff is administrative. Um, because and one of the challenges that you'll face is that every investor will come from a different background. They will have made their money from different sources and have been in different sections of business. So you'll get the, the investor who's the accountant. Um, they'll want to see your financials your current position, what you're projecting, how you're gonna grow the money, what your cash is gonna be like. If they come from a tech background, they'll wanna know what your monthly recurring revenue is gonna look like. They'll wanna know what your um, churn is gonna be like, and they wanna see what your lifetime value is gonna be like. And they'll expect you to have that vocabulary um, and be able to show that while you don't have um, you don't actually have the metrics available at that point because you don't have customers. Or maybe you do have customers, um, but you have to show that you understand it. So when you start getting customers coming through, you'll know how to track what they're doing. Um, and if you don't come from an accountancy background and that's beyond you, make sure that you have a good advisor standing by who can give your investor the reassurance that you've got that area of the business covered. If the investor comes from a tech background, there's a very good chance that they'll want to see or understand your tech stack. They'll want to know how your platform's been built. They'll want to know um, that the IP is all nicely secured. They'll want to know that you have a team who are building it, or if you've outsourced it, that you have someone who's looking after the outsourced um, provider. Um, and they'll just want to reassure that investor that you understand the technology of where it is today, how it's growing. Um, and yeah, oh yeah, and they'll, they'll ask about security and all those all those great things. Um, but just make sure you have the answers or you have someone with your team who can answer that question. Then you get the investor who's a big sales and marketing guy. They're gonna wanna know what your marketing strategy is, um, how, they, how you're gonna grow the business, um, what cash you're gonna have available for that, um, how you're gonna integrate your socials with your SEO with your traditional marketing strategy. Um, similarly, if you don't know it yourself, make sure you have someone in your team or advisor who can help you with it. Um, and I think also market research is very important as well. What an investor will like to see is that you've got a product that can scale into, um, that can scale out of Ireland and the international markets. They want to show that you're going to be able to, if you're going to deliver them 10, 10x on their investment and um, they have to know that there's a market out there who are going to generate the revenue for you to grow your business to that size um, 
and that there may ultimately be someone who will want to buy your company or, or VCs who'll come in and reward all the early investors. Um, so make sure you do your, your market research and your homework pretty well. Um, and yeah, talk to Enterprise Ireland as well. Um, they're Europe's largest early stage investor. They're very generous and supportive of the, the Irish startup ecosystem. Make sure you get a, a good um, Enterprise Ireland uh, manager who can actually help you get that organized. And I'm sure the, yeah, the guys at Republic of Work um, are, are well placed, I'm sure, to make some great introductions for you if you need that. Um, and then, yeah, from a C Legal's perspective as well, we have a lovely suite of. Um, employee agreements, consultant advisor contracts, um, co-founder agreements, getting all that paperwork is really important to get done straight away as well. Um, and I would also, I would really stress the co-founder agreements really early. Um, a lot can happen when you build a startup. It's a roller coaster. It's exhausting. It's draining. It puts pressure in all aspects of your life. It puts pressure on your relationships between you and your other co-founders. And sadly, all too often, co-founders fall out um, or they don't fall out, but they have a very different vision of where the business goes or they find other opportunities that they want to explore. Make sure that you get a co-founder agreement in place for as early as you possibly can, because it just means then that if you do go your separate ways, um, there's a foundation for that discussion and that negotiation that will make it a damn sight easier. Um, and won't cost you lots of money. So that's that would be my one of my big recommendations. And the one other thing just to mention here while I say it is consistent branding. Um, when you're preparing all these documents and all these bits and bits and pieces and getting them all together, um, and if you're sharing with people, with people, consistent branding, particularly if you've got a product which may be a consumer product, um, where brand is going to be very, very important to you. Keep that consistent through everything that you're doing and accuracy across everything that you're doing because it just gives that investor that confidence that you can execute and you're professional and you, you know what you're doing. So once you've got all these bits of bits and pieces all pulled together, you can then create your investment pack. Um, so this is these are the documents that you're going to use then to share out um across different investors um so you have your pitch deck a one-page investment summary but underneath all that you have your supporting docs um as i've mentioned there as well um it's funny that like business plans um aren't exactly fashionable um people don't like reading whole business plans people don't like receiving business plans and people don't like to think of people creating business plans but the irony is um, everyone reads a pitch deck differently and a serious investor will ask you for more details about certain aspects of the pitch deck, um, which in the past would have just been chapters in the business plan. So you are kind of creating a business plan, but you're holding it back, and just sharing the information for the investor when they want it, when they need it. Um, a one page investment summary is really good um, to, to wet people's appetite. Um, and then, as I say, have all this other stuff in the background. Um, video, I put a question mark beside that. Um, more and more, we're seeing people creating videos to support their um, investment round. Um, with video technology becoming so much easier to use, particularly through social media and TikTok and things. Um, yeah, it's getting easier. So, yeah, if you can create a good video, and if you're if it matches your brand and the journey that you're going on, then yeah, certainly create a video. It's a, it's a very good way to share who you are, what you are, and what it is that you're trying to, to achieve. So you've, you've got your overall plan, your strategy of what it is you're going to do with this, with this startup, where you're hoping to get to, what you need, what money you need to raise to, to get there and execute it. You've done all the research, all the homework that you need to do. And you're now ready to go out um, and actually find some investors. Um, yeah. While you're doing all that, you want to be doing your homework to 
find out who might be interested in investing in your in your startup. Um, I often hear um, people saying that they spoke to a hundred different VCs before they find the one who was going to invest in their company. They they spoke to X number of people and they ran around the country and they talked to everyone and eventually they found the investor. I often think, right, well, out of those 100, how many of them had ever invested in a company like yours? Um, if you do your homework um, and you dig around, um, if, you, if, if you identify a number of funds you think might be interested in investing in your company, if you then go into their websites and see what their portfolio was like, often they will list what sort of companies they invest into. Then you'll get a clear idea of um, whether or not you're suitable for them. Similarly, similarly with angels, um, yeah, Ireland is still a, a country of, of angels. Like the chances are your early investment rounds are gonna come from somebody you know, who knows someone who's made a few quid and wants to support some local startups. That's, that is still where it, where it comes from. So. I think if you work at those networks and you ask the questions and you're not being nosy, you're just making sure that you don't waste anyone's time by really finding out either from them or from their advisors or from their accountants or from their solicitors. You want to find out, like, are we really the sort of thing that they'd like to get involved in? Do you think they have some cash available? Do you think this is the right time of the year for them? Um, and if they, if you get positive noises about that, then approach them and then go to them. Um, if you get like an amber light, yeah, make a soft, sort of go to them gently saying this might be right for you now, but this is what we're doing and I think you might be interested. Because you never know what where their circumstances might change. And with angel investors, it's often uh, timing can be everything. And um, they may have executed another deal and have cash available that they want to deploy. Um, or you got them at the wrong time where they've just invested in a lot of things and they're not, they don't have the cash available or they've invested in something which has gone horribly wrong and they swear themselves off into investing. Those guys usually come back. Um, and while you're doing this, you've got to keep growing, growing the business and building a narrative. Um, I think what's really, really important is that every time that you have a follow-up conversation with one of your investors, you want to be able to tell them something good that has recently happened with the business. Um, so those can be, you've just recruited someone or you've just got a contract or someone's taken on your product for a, a new um, trial or just every time you talk to them, you show that you're making progress, you show that you're executing another side of the business, you show that you're, um, you're, you're, you're moving forward and you're not standing still. The last thing that investors want to see in an entrepreneur or a fine or a, or a startup is that it's sitting there waiting for money to magically appear for them to do things. Um, there's always stuff you can be doing. Um, and yeah, keep, keep sharing those, carrying those stories as well. Um, yeah, and, and build your team. Uh, it's really hard recruitment at the minute. Talent is limited, it's very expensive. Um, but your team can be part-time. People can be part-time, they can be advisors, they can be contractors, it can be different things. But as long as you bring them in, get them on the proper contracts um, and get them incentivized to, to work for your company, then, then that would be great. Um, and then in terms of looking for investment, the best thing, well, okay, this is should be thing take the one of the few positives that have come out of the, the, the COVID crisis that we've had um, has been the breaking down of geographic barriers um, because of calls and things like this. Um, at Raise Ventures in Belfast, um, we took we opened up our accelerator program and a company from London applied and came on with us and they do uh, blockchain identity verification software. Um, and they were doing an investment round. Um, and the investment for that company has come from Canada, US. Um, there's an angel investment syndicate in Mauritius, um, where one of the members is linked into a European syndicate. Um, so that Mauritius syndicate has joined the round um, and from the UK and investors from Ireland. So 
and all that was done on Zoom. Um, I'm trying to find her has used an excuse to visit Mauritius, but it's all been really done through Zoom, and it just shows that you can look out and beyond. What you really want to do is find people who understand the product that you're building, the problem that you're solving, and to believe in you as a founder to execute on that. And if you're going to show that you're not that you're able to execute, you can't be shy. We have to get away from our Irish um, shyness and our, our, yeah, not wanting to be big mouth or a booster. But my goodness, when you're when you're when you're promoting your startup, it's not you you're promoting; it's your your business. This is the idea, and this is the thing that's going to make people lots of money. So, um, yeah. I'm happy to take some questions. All I can do is apologize for rambling like a madman for 33 minutes. And I hope you find it useful. Um, and yeah, happy to happy to take any any questions at all. Thanks, Michael. That was great. Um, so there's just two questions in the chat. So one's from Bernard. It says, do you also review existing safe agreements from accelerators in Europe and give advice? Currently have one as a mentor, coach, forward slash advisor and quite long to read. Um, I'm, I'm sure we could get someone to have a look at, look at it for you. So if you want to email me, um, we'll be able to help. And if we can help, we can pass you on to someone who can give you some, some help. That, that's no problem at all. Perfect. And Michael's email is just on screen there as well. Um, so the second question is, Michael, can you please elaborate regarding customer testimonials? What do investors expect to see there? I, I think, yeah, customer testimonials are really useful. Um, I think they show that the product or service that you're developing um, has resonated with potential customers. Um, it shows that... Um, it shows that you can execute and deliver. It shows that you, it shows that, that if that customer has used your product, whether paid for or as a free trial, and if they can show that, yeah, that's that's helped up. If it's business to business, if your product has helped them make money, or save money, um, an investor will be, yeah, their eyes will light up with that. If it's a consumer product, um, and you get consumers who are getting excited about buying your product, that will give the investor reassurance as well. Um, I think the the customer testimonial helps validate that you are solving a real problem um, and that there are people there who, who, who want to avail of it. Great. Um, so there's another question in from John and it just says, as an Irish company, if you have existing EIS, EIIS sorry, and investors, how easy is it to use seed legals for EIIS in the UK as well as Ireland? Um, so we currently don't support EIIS, um, but we can introduce accountants who, who do. Um, then for UK EIS, um, it's, it's a separate scheme, um, but if you have a UK branch or a member of staff who's based in the UK, you can sign contract contracts. Um, and your company is less than, I think it's seven years old, um, and you're in an innovative business, in an, an, in an innovative business um, you can apply and then likely qualify. Um, so similarly, if, if it's something you want to explore, let me know and I can, I can get someone to help you out. Great. Um, so Mim has asked, I'm um, wondering if you have templates for co-founder agreements and early funding team, early founding team members contracts. Yep, you can find those on um, clegals.ie. Cool. Um, so James has his hand raised there. So if you want to unmute there, James, and ask your question. Yeah, cheers, sir. Um, hi, Michael. Thanks very much for the presentation. It's very good. Um, hi, James. We have a situation where we're raising kind of like a pre-seed um to well it is a pre-seed uh, 200k at the moment um and yep. we got our first angel who kind of preliminarily said that he'd be up for investing pending terms and all that um yep. he's based in california uh okay. we're a us we're an irish entity but we've got we've received investment into the irish entity already yeah so we can't just sign it over to a, a delaware corp which i guess would be the standard way of kind of doing that from my understanding so I don't know if you have any guidance around, have you seen that happen before for companies? Um, yeah, I, 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 th I think it, 
it depends is the God, I'm about to open a massive can of worms here. Has the yeah. has the yeah. has the has the invest is he looking for any specific tax reliefs or um so it's his first time investing in a non-US company. It's our first time being invested in by a US investor. So it's kind of we're fit we're both I think both sides are kind of figuring it out. Um yeah. but it's through it's through safe. Uh no well if it think of it if it's through a safe note and are using the Y combinator. Yeah. Uh, we pr- we will probably be using the white combinator one. Yeah. Um. Or if you slightly if modified. You, yeah. If you go through, if you use use that, or um, I'll pitch the seed fast here on the seed. <laughs> um. If if you use that, if you use that template, that'll give you a good solid foundation, and it should once you then decide whether you're going to go down the Delaware flip route or model. Um, it should then it'll it'll be it'll it should work out okay. But I would recommend probably you'll 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 likely have to get some U.S. legal counsel as well on this just to make sure that. Yeah, I think what one thing I should have said right at the beginning of this was the reason for all that planning and everything is you don't want to do anything at the beginning that screws up future funding rounds or the future of the business. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a really good work example where yeah, you're right to be. Not hesitant, but make sure you get some good counsel on this as well. And I'd recommend a lawyer who's who's done some work in the states, and we can introduce someone who can probably help you with this as well. If you get that. Okay, cool. I might choose you an email so and get in touch maybe. And, yeah. yeah, no, that that would be cool. Perfect. Thanks, Millie. Great. Um, so I think that's all of the questions for today, guys. Um, so thanks for coming along to our lunch and learn. Um, I've just popped the link to a quick survey into the chat there. It's just um, an NPS survey so we can continue to improve our lunch and learns. Um, so if everyone can fill that out, I'd be really grateful. Um, my email is also a bit further up in the chat if anyone fancies hosting a lunch and learn or if anyone has any questions about Republic of Work, just pop me an email. And thanks again to Michael for today and his email is still on screen there if anyone wants to note it down. And as always, our recordings will be shared on YouTube in the coming days. Um, So thanks for attending, everyone. And thanks again to Michael. Cheers. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy it. Thanks, Michael, sir. Cheers.